Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to the show. Glad you're here with me. Uh, follow, subscribe wherever you're at. Just hit the plus sign, subscribe button, wh- whatever it is. I don't know if you're on Amazon or Apple Music or YouTube, whatever. Hit the thing, whatever the thing is that like subscribes you. You know what I'm saying? And then make sure that you're following MyFi on social media. It's just at MyFi Podcast everywhere, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that is at MyFi Podcast. You can follow me as well at Lee T. Baker everywhere, Instagram, threads if you're into that. That's, you know, a little thing. Um, and, uh, you know, wherever. Just follow us. And uh, you're going to love the show today. My friend Needles, incredible producer. Uh, you're going to love it. Dude's so wise. He's done so much work. Uh, hits that you've been jamming to for a while. Uh, you'll know. You'll know his work for sure. So glad you're here. Let's get into it. Here we are. We're ready to go. Uh, great show today with my friend Needles, uh, Kari Needles Kane, uh, incredible producer. He's worked on tons of stuff, you know, like I mentioned, and uh, I'm going to I'm gonna tell you about some of that in just a minute. Uh, we had a great conversation. We talk about his workflow. We talk about managing family and being in an industry that is so reactive. And then if you disappear for a while, you know, you feel a little bit irrelevant sometimes. So we just had a great conversation uh, about his creative process, creativity, some plans he's got for the future, a new studio he's building uh, here in Atlanta, uh, all sorts of stuff. And so I think I think you're going to love it. Maybe want to take some notes. I mean, uh, good stuff uh, in this episode for sure. So let me tell you about Needles. Kari Kane is his name. Kari Needles Kane. Uh, it goes by Needles. He's on the show today. Originally from Michigan, um, but man, he's he's really been like all over the place. Uh, he ended up getting getting a uh, master's in music business from NYU. Did his undergrad at Florida State, which we talk a little bit about education in the world of m- the music industry and creativity, and you know whether it's necessary or not, and all that. So that, that's a good part of the conversation. Uh, he ended up getting an internship at Bad Boy with uh, like P. Diddy and the whole Bad Boy crew there in the early 2000s. And uh, that was like a huge time for, for Bad Boy. So he learned a lot, ended up starting to pursue production. He thought he was going into A&R, ends up pr- pursuing production um, and uh, got that ne- the Needles nickname. Actually, he was DJing when he was at Florida State for his undergrad. He was DJing down there and that's how he got his name. Um, won multiple Grammys. Uh, I don't know if I have the number right. It's like five or six. He's, he's won a lot of Grammys. Uh, he's worked with Cardi B, Bruno Mars, Drake, 50 Cent. Uh, we talk a lot about that. He's also one of the most chill, just humble dudes that uh, I've ever been around. We worked together uh, a few months back. Uh, we both do work for an incredible nonprofit called Dynamo Studios, which you guys should also check out. Uh, it's just at Dynamo Studios, uh, where we go uh, get to work with kids in schools, teach them audio production and audio engineering. And Dynamo is an incredible nonprofit that's based out of Chattanooga. And my friend Kessler Kuffman is the reason that I met Needles in the first place uh, through Dynamo Studios. So Dynamo is an incredible thing too that, that Needles and I are both a part of. And uh, anyway, Anyway, um, he's just a good dude, chill, talented, uh, humble, and and amazing. And so I think you're going to love this conversation that I have with my friend Needles. Needles, what's up, bro? Not much, man. How are you? Good, good. Good to finally catch up with you, man. You're a busy dude. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to stay busy, man. You got to keep moving and, uh, and you got to stay active, man. That's, that's, that's the key for me. Oh, yeah. You like, you like being busy? I, at this point, I'm used to it. That's all I know. You know what I mean? If, and it's like, if it's not, you know, for music, it's with, you know, the family. It's, I'm always into something, real estate, construction. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's always something going on over yeah, here. Yeah, I saw, was it uh, your wife opened a boutique here in Atlanta? Yeah, so that's her third boutique. Oh, snap. Uh, yeah, so we, we've been, she's been in that field for over a decade. Um, she's always... Uh, her first uh, boutique was in Hoboken, New Jersey. Uh, oh, wow. Then we moved to Atlanta. We had a few shops, and this one is her latest. But yeah, and that construction kind of feel, we're, like we build our house, we're building the duplex right now, building the studio. It's all this. I'm like a contractor. That's like my <laughs> other kind of thing, man. So yeah, it's a big. It's a big part of you know. My wife's a realtor. I'm a contractor. Nice. And uh, that's just other stuff we do to kind of kind of keep the keep the money coming in you know i'm excited about the studio thing dude um yeah uh i was talking to a couple of our mutual friends uh just about it and well t- tell me all about that i, w- I want to know all about it I'm, I'm gonna get to all your history all that sort of stuff but yeah. i want to know about the studio 
So yeah, I mean, I'm 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 super excited about it. It's uh, it's been a little bit of a. Uh, it, it, it's been something I've been working on for three years. Like oh, the wow. actual building of the studio. I mean, which is ridiculous. It's kind of started around COVID. I had the residual effect from COVID as far as like s- supply chain stuff. And oh, okay. It's been all kinds of like issues getting this place open. I'm, I'm at the tail end. Um, but it's basically, it's, it's a million dollar studio in the middle of, uh, yeah. Atlanta, right across from Pont City Market. Oh, it's, nice. Uh, Midtown, yeah. Um, yep. It's in Midtown. It's designed by, um, uh, WSDG, which they're like maybe top two, top three, uh, kind of studio builders wor- worldwide. They've, they've done all kinds of, you know, really, really, uh, they did, I think they did uh, Alicia Keys studio was at Jungle City. They, oh, man. They've done all kinds of things around. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I was, it's been great kind of, you know, working with them and just to make sure I got like top of the line, everything, you know, from, yeah. from, you know, just the, the way the walls are constructed, the size of the rooms for me, cutting concrete to make sure the rooms don't touch and each room has its own AC. And it's just, it's been a lot of like really tedious work but I, I think it'll be worth it at the at the end of the day hoping i hope to open you know towards the beginning of next year and and uh the the main kind of purpose for it's just, just a hub for artist development oh, nice. um pri- primarily with you know new artists um that's that that, that seems to be my my thing my 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 little area that i really want to concentrate in now is just working with new artists developing so- their sound um uh all while getting really good content um, yeah and, and so that it's just going to be the hub for you know all of that there's going to be you know an app to go along with it so you can tune in and oh, subscribe nice. and see what we're what you got what we got going on in each room there's oh like watching offering. watching people live yeah. like create oh that's yeah, crazy you're gonna yeah you're gonna be able to watch what i got going on every day or whatever i um whenever i whenever i'm working you can to it, kind of like Twitch and like yeah, yeah. Ties from that. you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. going to be like that. Um, you're going to be able to chat with me. You're going to be able to submit for stuff. Um, oh, it's going to be a really interactive kind of thing, like a community that I'm trying to build. So it's once again, it's a lot of work. I'm still, you know, putting some things together, but I'm excited for it, though. That's awesome. Well, you definitely got yeah. the background for it, man. Like I know, I know um, uh, you worked on the uh was the doo and Hooligans record for Bruno yeah. Mars. Like, I know you just know, sure. with Drake and Cardi B and yeah. all of that stuff. But you know what I was, and that's super impressive. The Grammys, the sales. I mean, dude, you're, I don't think enough people realize like the things that you've had your hands on and what yeah. you've done. Um, yeah. And so like, man, I'm a fan. Um, Appreciate it. I'm honored you're on the show today. Nice. Um, you know what I was shocked by? Mm. I... I think, and this isn't a knock against not going to school, but like mm-hmm. you have a undergraduate degree, a graduate degree, you did yeah. some incredible inter- like you went the formal education route. <laughs> yeah. uh, you, you know what I'm saying? I just don't yeah, think that in the music industry, I don't know that that's like super common. Yeah, it's definitely not the norm. Uh I don't know that it's necessary, but it benefited me for sure. Like, well, I was going to ask. I was going to ask. Yeah, felt like it was beneficial. Yeah. To uh, it, it was kind of something where like one thing led to the next, you know, I actually, I started my undergrad at Florida A&M University. Okay. Where I, I, um, I was there I went for business administration. Um, I, I was a DJ in high school, kind of brought that up along to me with uh, an, un, an undergrad. D- didn't really kind of click with the school, but I just got more and more into music. I DJed all the time. Yeah. Um, so I was like, look, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I know I want to do something involved with music. Let me find a way to uh, learn more about music, you know. And for me, that was going to like a grad program or going somewhere that that uh, could teach me all the ins and outs about the industry. But and then also um, for me, New York was the place to be because New York was as far as hip hop was concerned, was like the Mecca. Oh, yeah. Still, yeah. Brick and mortar labels, all that stuff. So um I had to get out of school early. I, obviously, I wanted to graduate. So I switched schools, went to Florida State for like a year and a half, finished Florida State. I got my degree in marketing. 
and uh, applied and got accepted to uh, New York University's uh, music business program, which at the time was very rare. There wasn't a lot. It wasn't like how it is today, where there's like a ton of music mm. business pro- programs. It was, it was rare. And for me, once again, it was a, it was like a win-win because it was in New York. Yeah. So, went there um, right before I left to go to New York. I sold my turntables and bought an MPC just to be like portable and just have something to do as a hobby. It was never like a yeah. goal or a plan to be a producer. I was really going to be like an A&R, at least that's what I thought. But um, a part of the curriculum at NYU is to have an internship. They had this like really dope list serve um, that had the, the different opportunities. I saw a bad boy and I went up there and, you know, just kind of did my thing. And, and uh, I didn't, you know, I really didn't let them know I made music at the time. They just after a few months of working there and they kind of asked what I did on the side and I was like look I just started making beats here's a few beats and um, I worked for the part of the company that managed the hitman so oh yeah uh, so Bink and uh, uh, Stevie J and Mario Winans and all those guys that made all those big hit records for for Bad Boy um, so I worked for that part of the company um, the guy I worked for Damon Eden liked the music that I played for him and he started shopping my music along with the other hitmen and uh that's really how i got my start one of the one of the cds made it to def jam and and i got a little quick placement and then the rest is kind of history what, what was that first place what was the first thing you were like oh man, uh, this is serious yeah uh, it, it was it was on this uh rough riders three soundtrack and it was the nice. song called like there's i don't know i think it songs like i don't it was I don't give a fuck something something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that was the name of the song. Yeah, it was, I did two songs, but I um, you know, the A and R just told me to just keep coming up there and playing her stuff, and eventually she started managing me. Um, she was the A and R for Method Man, Method Man, Red Man, and DMX, and uh, and so yeah, she started managing me, and she's the one that kind of got me all my first placements and and uh, my start in New York, you know. That's crazy, dude. I just yeah. don't. Uh, and you're an NPC guy still, huh? Yeah, 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 for sure. Like I, it's just the way I kind of think about creating. It's fun. It's yeah. tangible. It doesn't feel like I'm, you know, programming a a computer. It's it's just I don't know. It's something about it that with the with the workflow. Really, the 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 main thing for me on the NPC is. Um, I like to start ideas and if I get stuck, mm-hmm. I like to move really quick. So on the NPC, you it, it's set up in like sequences, right? So yeah. you do a sequence, I can add drums and all this stuff. But if I get stuck, I don't have to like close, save, yeah. open a new thing. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. just hit one knob. I have a blank slate. And so when I normally make music, I'll make five, six, seven ideas really quick. See what, then go back to them. See which ones I like to flush out, and then maybe put it in the Pro Tools or something like that, just to add more stuff. But yeah, yeah it's definitely how I kind of create. I mean, I've tried Logic. I, I did some, I did some, some, you know, a couple years on Logic, but I just kept coming back to, um, kept coming back to, you know, the NPC as it got better and better. It started to update itself. It's a hardware yeah. software type thing. So So are you on so, a new one? Are you on a new one? Are you on like Yeah, right now or? I'm on the like keyboard one. The, oh, okay, uh, okay. Yeah, it's the NPC key sixty one or something like yeah. that. It's kinda like an all in one type thing. So yeah man, it's just still the basic yeah. it's the same thing as it as it was. I I love the fact that they kept a lot a lot of that the same and then also how they, you know, they had time stretch and all the stuff they didn't have back in the day. So it makes yeah. it, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. I was watching something with Mark Ronson the other day, and he he's an NPC guy too, and he's got like mm-hmm. his OG NPC that like DJ Premier signed for him and yeah. all this stuff from like back in the day. And there's something yeah. if you're if you're listening, an NPC is just like, and you don't know what that is. Uh, it's 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 like got 16 pads on it, and you can kind of finger drum and like create beats and sample and put sounds on it and all sorts of things. It's just how some people start. A lot of a lot of producers do it, but I know that like it seems like the producers that have a workflow. And I want to ask you about that too, because the producers that have a workflow, they have a thing where they go, now this is how I work. 
Like when yeah. Timbaland's like, he's a beatbox guy. Like so much of his yeah. beats, like start that. Uh, yeah. I mentioned Mark Ronson, you know, he's a, he's a NPC guy. You're an NPC guy. I know people who just pick up a guitar and they chop up a loop and, you know, create something like that. But you have a thing and the workflow seems to be so important. I think that would be important for any creative person, no matter if you're a graphic designer, if you're a contractor, like whatever, like having that flow, has your flow been i know it's been important to you has it changed throughout uh the course of your career um yeah i mean i think that one thing is you know it's it's like always trying to find inspiration that's like the biggest thing like yeah trying to find something that's going to inspire you to like even finish the beat or like see that something that has potential so and when i started drums were, were my thing like i used mm-hmm. to really dig and you know it wasn't like it is today where you know if you type in drum like you can just get a million drums at your disposal yeah. <laughs> it's like you literally had to almost like go cut it out of a record and yeah. rob and trade and <laughs> do all kinds of stuff to get drums so um i somehow collected and it was that, that was like my thing really really big kicks and snares and um and so that's how i would kind of uh um start my drums at least having those collection of drums just handy right away yeah um and I, I'm, I'm pretty much a sample base kind of guy you know yeah. at least that's how i started i you know i have tons of records i'll just you know at least when i started when i was you know and broke i would there was a guy <laughs> on the corner he sold like a dollar records or 50 cent you know records and yeah. i would go and just grab all the crappy records that i can afford and just sit at home and just listen to them and find little stuff here and there and you know didn't have a lot of sampling time but just made the best of it and you know i think that that along with my drums was really kind of how i kind of got my start and kind of made a name for myself and yeah. that that hasn't changed a lot i think um the process of digging for samples is a little different you yeah, know yeah. Packs um, and whatnot now yeah it's like you know youtube it's it's all kinds of stuff it's where anywhere you can kind of get the inspiration i mean sometimes it's splice sometimes it's yeah it's whatever i'm not i'm not really like opposed to splice or wherever i can get anything that i think is dope um also another thing about my workflow is that's that has changed is i don't this is going to sound weird, but I don't really pay as much attention to the actual creation of the beat per se. I'm more so about the song. Like, what is this song going to be like? I can make a beat in like 10, 15 minutes. You know what I mean? Whatever. It, it'd be a scratch idea. But in this point in my career, it's like I just realized like a beat to beat, but a, a great song is, is, is a well-written song will go a lot further than uh, a really really dope beat you yeah. know what i mean so i'm i'm working with the writers i'm really hands-on with who i work with I'm, I'm really in the traditional sense that kind of a producer where i'll like guide the song to where i want it to go and yeah, things yeah. of that nature and um so unlike back in the day where i had hours and hours and hours alone with no kids and stuff like that <laughs> to like tweak a snare and eq this and i don't you know i just know how to get get it there faster yeah yeah and really concentrate on the you know kind of creation of the song yeah and you came up like in the era like when you were at bad boy that was like the era where people were paying and i guess it's the same in creative every creative industry in a sense but like people were paying big money for beats like early yeah. 2000 and now it's just it's not that way like this yeah the advance on the beat sorry like, no sorry you, this <laughs> thing is crapping out on me hold on one second <laughs> you good it's almost more uh, like you should be working on whole songs instead of trying to place beats uh, and and work with artists more often, which seems like what you're doing. I mean, I know you've always worked with artists, you know, from the ground. Yeah. Up, but it seems like that's even more so, even with the studio and artist development and all that now. So it's even more about that than it has been. So that would make sense as to why you're going, no, nah, man, I'm trying to work on whole songs, not just like yeah. ideas. Yeah, I definitely, I got a taste of executive producing a project and oh, nice. you know i did the, this is an artist named nicole bus and I, i've discovered in in amsterdam i don't know maybe four or five years ago and got her signed to rock nation was able to executive produce and pretty much do her whole project and i probably got the most enjoyment 
kind of working on that and just from that creative process to really be able to uh, put string together a, a group of beats and songs that all kind of felt cohesive and would leave the listener with, you know, a vibe and, and like an idea of who that artist is. Um, I definitely get more enjoyment out of that that process and it, it i mean but the thing about it is it's, it's just as hard as getting a place it's harder than getting a placement is to uh to to really break an artist in-house like get them a deal and just all of that especially nowadays with social media and all the kind of hoops and hurdles you have to go through so um i think my sweet spot is finding signed artists that aren't really doing much on the label or are kind of like kind of starting out or the label doesn't quite know what to do with them and yeah that's kind of been my 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 sweet spot and then i'm still trying to figure out i think i feel like just like the rest of the industry really trying to figure out that best that conduit to really get good talent to the masses and while having some type of integrity and you know and, and just kind of keeping the music first so um yeah. So yeah, it's 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 a, it's 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 a little bit of a mix. I don't, which has kind of been biting me in my ass a little bit lately. But I haven't been like submitting records like I used to, mm. like all the time. I I really have been working with a, just a ton of new artists that I think are really dope and kind of getting their career started with hopes that one of them, yeah, somebody brings. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Because you know, if that happens, then what I have 10 songs on Drake's new album you know what I'm saying like on with the new Drake's yeah. album you know what I'm saying or the new Beyonce I'm I'm really big on trying to find those next the next Drake next the stars. next Beyonce yeah yeah, yeah that For kind sure. of thing yeah. now I, yeah. I, I feel you on that I I think that's just you over time it sounds like you've just narrowed it down to what you really feel like you're good at and what you yeah. enjoy doing and that sort of thing. And I think that's important because you can get lost in trying to do 10, the music industry, there's so many ways, yeah. so many yeah. avenues for you to, even just as a guitar player, bro, there's like a sure. hundred thousand things I could try to focus on TV, film music, which I do a little yeah. bit of and, you know, yeah. making loops for producers, which I do like yeah. whatever you could focus on a thousand different things but finding those things that you feel like you do something unique with and yeah. that you enjoy man yeah. that's, it just takes time too it does it does it, it takes a lot of time i mean i've had a couple big records that allow me to have that like mm. um that runway yeah to be able to like not submit to, you know what i mean <laughs> to start working <laughs> with you know what i mean so it's it's like that that has helped but once again though i mean i still have to stay relevant um, yeah. that stuff really helps whatever I'm doing move faster. So, you know, I kind of, um, it's it really now kind of getting back into the submitting for different projects and, 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 and that kind of rat race. But, um, but yeah, man, it's, it's, um, I've been doing this for over 20 years now mm. and, um, it's, uh, it's been, it's, it, it's it's been interesting all the kind of twists and turns and ups and downs to kind of get to where I am now so yeah well I know like you, you say about staying relevant and making sure that you're like back in the game I know yeah. I, I was listening to an interview the other day on a uh, another podcast with uh Ryan Tedder and mm -hmm. he said he took like a year off of music and he he's like now that's like it's so hard to take that much yeah. time. Obviously, like people forget about you. But what, oh, I've, noticed, well, what I've noticed with you, though, and I, I told you this in a text one day, I admire mm. how engaged you are with your family and how much you post. Like, yeah. I've seen you post stuff like just out playing basketball with your kids or like at doctor's yeah. appointments with your kids, like yeah. whatever. What is that balance like, man? Because you're like a wanted dude in the industry, in a really busy yeah. industry, where if you do take a second off, you could yeah. get forgotten. But at the yeah. same time, you're like there opening your wife's boutique and taking your kids yeah. to the doctor's all those sorts of things. What is that? How do you find that balance? It's tough. It's, it's probably been the probably pretty much been the story of my career. Mm. Um, you know, because I, I my my first child. You know, it's funny. I it's like I kind of name my child. If I if I had a, a a newborn or something coming, I would get a single. So like my first. <laughs> 
My Daughter was a song I did for this uh, artist, Young Buck. It was Let Me In. And then my middle child was I'm Going In by Drake. Oh, like, wow. literally, like, if I would have a kid, I would have a single come out. And then my, <laughs> my son was Just The Way You Are by Bruno Mars. Oh, 2000. Yeah, so um, it's always been the push and pull. I think the big thing for me is just over time is just learning how to work smarter. Yeah. Like learning how to have a team, trying to kind of delegate some things. Um, I, I grew up in a household with two parents and they were very loving and caring and they were present and, you know, went to, took me to football and I just don't, I, I don't see myself any other way. I couldn't see myself being a different type of father than that or not yeah. there and stuff like that. So for me, I just have to make time to do kind of a little bit of everything. Um, I, I do think, I don't want to say my music career has suffered. I just, I'm just not on the scene and as present as I could be or should be. But I, I think it's in some ways it's kind of worked for me uh, in the sense that I've never been super hot that I'm going to fall off the map, but I've never been too cold where people completely forget about me. I get mm. calls every day. I just kind of stay like right on the radar, get a little record, you know, and it's, I've had like a really interesting career in, the, in, in that sense. So, um, but that balance is, I mean, not only am I balancing just family and industry, I have an autistic child. So mm. that's one thing. My wife is an entrepreneur. So that's a whole, you know, other thing. And, but, uh, um, I think that I've tried my best you know yeah. what I'm saying? To be to be present in both places. And, um, you know, sometimes you do have to you have to be selfish with your time sometimes and say, hey, guys, I got to work. I got to I got to go. I got to I need to spend some time and make some money because I'm not making any money hanging out with you guys. Right now, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's real. So, yeah. Yeah, for sure. How do you know what to say no to? Do you have like a thing in your mind, any like criteria or anything where you just go like, eh, I just have a bar or I have a something that some framework that allows you to make a decision to go, that's just not worth it. That's a great question. Um, just because I, I really believe that there are no, like, it's weird. I don't believe there are any like wrong moves. I just feel like you make a move and then just yeah. roll with it. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I feel like, God has already got my life mapped out. I just make decisions and roll with it. So, like, when I decide on, like, what I'm going to do with my time during the day, um, I do say yes a lot. I say because I never know what that may lead to. Sure. And a lot of times in my career, it's always kind of been one random thing that's led to another cool thing that's led to this, that's led to that. So, um I would say I don't say no enough, hmm. but um, but yeah, I mean, I I, I don't I, I tend to like want to work on things that I think are positive and kind of uplifting. I don't nowadays I don't work on a ton of rap stuff just because one I don't really like putting my in, in order to in my opinion in order to like place rap stuff or you kind of have to be really on the scene. You got to be in the, you have to be in the studio with the artist at four. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to be right there to get those placements and, you know, yeah. and then that environment and stuff like that. So I, I, I kind of tend to stay away from that. I feel like I've steered more towards pop and R and B, um, kind of vibes. I think R and B and, uh, R and B pop is kind of my, my sweet spot because I can work out of my house. I don't, well, at least right now until my studio is done. And, um, and, uh, you know, I can work when I, when I can't, when, whenever I get the opportunity to work, I can work with a songwriter, do a song and submit the song. And, and so, so yeah, I, I mean, that's a great question. I, I, I kind of try to prioritize things by you almost have to buy like what's going to bring you yeah. some money, <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 But, but um, I also just really like being dope. Like, uh, I feel like 
you know, I kind of came up in an era where it wasn't just like, yo, I'm trying to make money, 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 money. It's just like, I want to be, yeah. I want to be known as somebody that's bringing something to the culture and doing something different or, you know, and, and, and being dope is what's going to like bring the money and all that stuff. Uh, man, I, I did want to ask you about just the way you are, because it's, it's personal to me. And right. when I found out you did that song, I was like, oh man, it's amazing. Uh, yeah. When my daughter turned one year old, I had taken a bunch of pictures from her first year, you know, of life, and we made a little video for her birthday, and that was the song. And, That's crazy. And my wife and I always joked about it because it's not super appropriate for like a daughter's <laughs> birthday. You know what I'm saying? Like it's about like yeah. it's like a love song. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah, a dude, yeah, yeah. You know, somebody said there's a couple of lyrics like when we watch that video back that my wife and I always laugh at, you know, because it doesn't <laughs> fit the context. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but. I remember, so that song's obviously like always meant a lot to our family. We'll repost that video like, you know, every time that you know, her birthday comes around, you know, it comes up on like, you know, memories and Facebook or wh- whatever, you know what I'm saying? So I hope you get paid for that, bro. I hope you get paid every yeah. time I repost that <laughs> yes. video, you know? <laughs> yeah, that, that half a penny. What, what was that? Yeah. Uh, what was that like though? Because that was, I mean, I guess Bruno wasn't Bruno yet. Um, yeah. But how, I guess, and, and was that like your first like huge project i guess that blew your first big single what was the process like getting to be a part of that and then the subsequent you know things that happened you know that came to fruition because of that yeah so um the way that kind of record came about was it wasn't intended for bruno at all oh really yeah that song was intended for this rapper lupe fiasco oh i love lupe fiasco yeah and lupe we we worked a lot in the past and I was on his first album and stuff like that. I'm a big fan. And, um, he had started doing some songs that kind of like crossed him over a little bit. Mm-hmm. I think it was superstar and some other ones or whatever. So he did, I, one, I kinda song, to- he did one song with bass nectar that, um, I was so, man, if you did that sample, bro, Nah, oh nah, God. nah, I, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 That was, yeah, was but 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 he started kind of branching out from like straight hip hop stuff, and, and Atlantic that 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 label was big on because they had like Bob too, who kind of started yeah. crossing over, you know. So I, you know, uh, did the beat with a friend of mine. His name is Cassius, and uh, I always I always had Adam Levine in mind. Uh-huh. So yeah. I, you know, my guy wrote the hook. We had somebody reference it, and um, at the time, I had been listening to a lot of Coldplay and oh, nice. um, uh, I just a, like a, just a lot, just really a lot of Coldplay, and so that's why that kind of hook has those kind of big kind of elements, and and um, but yeah, so we did the song. I wanted to have it, you know, Lupe featuring Adam Levine. They, I sent it to Atlantic, to Aaron Bayshow. He liked the song, um, loved the song. And they were like, oh, we probably can't get Adam Levine. We're going to try this new kid. His name Bruno Mars. I was like, Bruno? No, he said, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It wasn't like, he wasn't big like that. So, yeah. Um, but they're pretty, pretty adamant. And um, so he sent the song back. Bruno just did the hook. Sound great. You know, and with Atlantic, a lot of the records they work on, it, you just, it's like, constant tweaking and stuff like that you'll like mm. tweak a record for forever so <laughs> i spent like oh, a month month and a half kind of working on drums kind of switching things up the hook the hook part of the song always kind of stayed the same pretty much like um but like a year uh, or not a year but like a month after we submitted the song um everything kind of just went cold i was like i don't I don't know what's happening with this record after they had me work on it for a month and a half. Yeah. Um, but I got a call from Aaron. He was like, hey, man, I'm about to change your life. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I was like, <laughs> whatever. He's like, Bruno Mars did the, it's going to be the first single. And I'm just like, man, I don't, I don't know. I, I Like I said, once again, he wasn't like. Yeah, you don't big. know what that means back then. He- yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I thought it was cool. Um, uh, I sent them this session. They added some stuff. Like, they kind of, like, the way I did the piano originally was very, like, basic because I'm not a keyboard player mm. or whatever. So it was, like, very, like, basic. 
Um, so they kind of like played it out. Um, uh, the the Schmiegentons or whatever, um, which not, which is dope. Like I really like, yeah, like just that element alone. Like that's pretty much. And then like the drum pattern was the same, but they kind of like changed the, the the actual sounds and shit like that. But whatever. Mm-hmm. I, I like the way it came out. Like it felt, you know, when they when I I, and I have to find that version that I have that says, you know, they'll the it's the watermarked by Atlantic and says this is uh this is owned by Atlantic Records every yeah. like five seconds yeah, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um so yeah man, I mean basically the song came out and you know and once again my wife my wife was pregnant and you know I've had a song or two on the radio at the time but um my son was premature. He came like a month early. Oh wow. Or whatever. So I had to like go to the hospital like day after day for like a month, just back and forth from my the you know my apartment to the hospital, and I just kept noticing like they every time I would get in the car, the song would be on, you know what I'm saying? And I just just like this is kind of crazy, like this song is playing a lot, yeah. you know what I mean? And but never did I think it would go on and be like number one song in the world, and like I don't know, fifteen, sixteen times platinum, and it's just. That's crazy. It's, yeah, it's it's a it's been a massive record, a massive blessing, and um, really opened to my opened my eyes to you know. Bef- prior to that, I've been doing like a lot of hard shit. Like I did stuff for like Fifty Cent and yeah, really yeah. hard, dark music, minor chords, and stuff like that. But this was one of the first records I collab one collaborated with. You know, before I did everything myself, so I oh, collaborated. Nice. I did major chords kind of <laughs> things and and it kind of ended up in the pop space. So all those things were new to me and it just kind of opened my eyes to all three, you know. So since then I've collaborated more, I've, you know, done more, or at least attempted to do more pop stuff. Although it's weird, I haven't had a ton more after that. I'm still kind of in that R&B space. Hmm. Um, but no, it's, 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 once again, it's been a blessing and, and, you know, to this day, I, you know, I still, I, I, I followed a guy on Instagram that referenced the song, you know, so I have like a reference with another guy singing it and that's crazy. You know, yeah, it, it, it's, it was, it was cool to go from just an idea in a small little studio in Atlanta. It was, um. I think it's Vision Studio and a small little room and just to end up being this big thing. Definitely a blessing. It's crazy, dude. What, what's your, yeah. uh, what's like the, the song that you have worked on that maybe you're the most proud of? I mean, I know that was a huge one and there's probably a ton yeah. of them, but you look back and go, nah, I, I was stoked about that from bottom to top. Um, That's tough. There's a couple that come to mind. Um, one was the song I did with uh, Drake and Lil Wayne and Young Jeezy. It's called I'm Going In. Mm. Because to me, like, I was living in New York and the music kind of dried up in New York. Like, the New York sound kind of dried up and, like, you know, Atlanta was taking over and T.I. and mm-hmm. G, you know what I'm saying? So I basically packed my family up. Like, hey, we got to go to where the oh, music that's, is. Oh, that's why you moved. That's why I moved because, oh, wow. like, yeah, everything was slowing up. Though. You know, now I just didn't want to wait for it to be completely dead. Yeah. So I was like, look, guys, we got to move. And I was like, look, it'll be cheaper down here. We can, you know, whatever. So we moved. Um my wife was reluctant, but we moved down and we struggled like for the first year and a half. It was a big, big struggle. But then once we kind of got our bearings um, and kind of kind of got settled, one of the first beats I did, in my opinion, that had some kind of southern taste to it. Oh, yeah. Um, was that song I'm going in. So that, that's me like adding uh uh, 808s and having little breakdowns and stuff like that. Like, so that that actual song was like my version of a Millie by Oh yeah, yeah, Lil Wayne. So you'll kind of you may hear some similarities in that. But 
at least the way the song was kind of formatted. Um, but, you know, but that song I'm, I'm always proud of, um, you know, that, that went from just being uh, a friend of mine told me, Lil Wayne's at the studio, go take him the CD of the beats and stuff. So I went down there and, uh, you know, back then, this is when there were still CDs. I, I went there and I just realized that my Sharpie ran out. So I basically gave Lil Wayne, it wasn't even Lil Wayne, it was like Lil Wayne's guy, a CD with no words on it. You know what I mean? And then he went and just leaked all the records oh. on the internet. <laughs> back, back back in the time, that was like that wasn't like idea because back then leaking a record was just like you'll never see any money off of it. Oh it yeah, just yeah. Of this. But one of the records caught, which was that record. I'm going in, and that ended up going platinum and being one of Drake's kind of earlier big songs. Um, and they, then they won a Grammy for that. Yeah, he didn't win a Grammy. No, it was like. So so far gone. I guess that's his first mixtape. Okay, okay, okay. They put they put it out in retail. Like it was a mixtape that just really broke him as an yeah. artist. And then they like did a retail version, and that song was on there. Oh, nice. So, uh, yeah, so that was cool. Um, this other record I did once again. This the artist from Amsterdam that I li- literally discovered in like a talent show in wow. Amsterdam. Said that you know I want to work with you. Had her come to um, the states, and we worked off and on for a couple years. And someone saw her on Instagram, saw me working with her, and told me to Rock Nations in town, come bring her to this big meeting. And to see that, like, she pretty much got signed on the spot. Hmm. To a couple months later, you know, once again, it's my first time executive producing a project, getting the whole project. Like, Pretty much, I did what ten or out of thirteen songs, something like that. Dang! But um, to seeing that song go number one, that that's another song that went number one, AC or whatever. But like, um, that was that was really cool to see that. I think that um, you know, for me, I have a goal to like having number ones in different charts, in oh, different, cool. different genres. So, um. I think I got four or five. So I got, That's and crazy. I'm trying to like, I'm trying to like get a country number one. I'm trying to get a gospel number one. And those are like some of the goals I have a dance number one and stuff like that. So, nice. so that was cool to get my urban AC kind of one out the way. Nice, man. That's a good, yeah. uh, that's a good, uh, question too. Like, so you have goals, your workflows match those things. Like, do you have, a normal yeah. flow. I mean, I know that, you know, it's always different cause it's the music industry and you're just kind of, you know, it's always sort of reactive Yeah. Like on a Tuesday needles wakes mm. up, grabs a cup of coffee and goes to the studio and you like, I got these three hours I'm blocking out. This like, you have a normal flow like that. Um, yes. In the sense that, you know, I definitely have like my day, at least right now is very like, time I have like like time blocks like mm-hmm. I try to work out in the morning I know I have from 10 to 2 maybe to figure out what I kind of want to do a lot of times like my brain's not warmed up early you know what I'm saying like yeah, I yeah. gotta you know I, you know um so I just kind of get in here and check emails and kind of fiddle around and then eventually um I kind of get the stuff but then I leave and make pick up a kid or Something like that. But um, no, I, I think my days are kind of set up or it's more about sessions. Okay. You know, I, I, I rarely these days just make beats just to make beats. Hmm. I, I, I want to get back to that. You but know, you I really want to. people now. Yeah. I mean, but, you know, they're not like huge people. They're just like up and comers and yeah. are newly signed artists and new songwriters and stuff like that. And I, I tend to like make stuff on the spot, say, Hey, you like this, you like that, you like that, you know, that, yeah. that, that's kind of what I, I, I work for whatever, I make the beat for whatever I'm working on that day. You know, I do try to prepare maybe like an hour before, gather some samples, gather some drums, you know, and kind of put some stuff together. But I think it's that process of, and you know, and I also work with Dom. I don't know if you, Dom, Dom's been my engineer for, Sheesh, over five years at this point. Oh, nice. Um, but 
you know, I gather my stuff. I'll do, uh, you know, sequences. I won't even format the whole song. I'll do a whole bunch of sequences, say, hey, I started these ideas. Do you like any of these? And they're like, yeah, I like that one. Yeah. And then I'll build it out a little bit more. And then I give it to Dom. He'll put it in Pro Tools, sequence it. And, you know, the thing about I like about my engineer slash the guy I produce with, he plays, he he's like a jack of all trades, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So he's like a Swiss Army knife. So having somebody like him, it really kind of helps um, me, especially if I have to leave. He knows how I like stuff to be done. Yeah, he, he keeps it going. Yeah, he knows I like symmetry. I don't really like, you know, I'm big on like, the writers writing a song that other people can relate to. Yeah, yeah. Um, songs that have a melody that you can get relatively quick. A lot of writers tend to like just do melodies that people can't catch relatively fast. And the key is by the second verse, the, pre- the people should know the, yeah. know it. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Those are the good songs that, you know, the melody comes on and say, oh, this is kind of catchy. Oh, you know what? This hook is cool. I like I like what it said. Oh, you know what? The verses come around again. I think I kind of know the melody already. Yeah, yeah. And they're able to sing it like the, the first first or second time they hear the song. It, it's, those are the songs that that I like. And I also tend to push writer, my writers towards like love songs because I feel like that's a universal language. Everybody yeah. kind of either wants to, wants to be in love or broke up, you know, that, that type of thing. But I rarely like songs about like my watch or yeah, something yeah. very small thinking, you know, or something that like harder to relate to. Yeah. And stuff that's like catered towards just rich people. I hate that stuff. Yeah. I hate the songs that are just like my Lamborghini. Look, I'm just like, <laughs> yo, most people don't have a Lamborghini, yeah. you know, they may want to get it, but still like, right. You could write a, another song or take it from another perspective. Yeah. Um, just try to relate. It, it, yeah. Just try to relate. And then, you know, if I'm working with a rapper, like a trap rapper or something like that, like I kind of push them to try to just get out of the box of, I don't even care if you talk about drugs and whatever you talk about, but just do it a different way. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like find a, find something unique or something, uh, a different approach to how you're saying whatever you want to say, you know? So I always push people, I'll push writers in the sessions. Some of them get get uh get mad with me because i'm very very picky very very like yo make it make sense you know yeah. and yeah well, that's and, why and that's what <laughs> yeah that, and that's that's why i like um i really like pop music because i feel like the writers they really take the time to make everything make sense yeah you know good. what i mean it's not a lot of like oh this is just a vibe you know what I'm saying? I, yeah. hate, I hate that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, stay you know, on the maybe, theme. Stay on the theme. Yeah, stay on the theme. You know, you don't have to bounce around and keep the same tense. You were just talking about we. Now you're talking about, I, like, just keep the same tense throughout yeah, the man. thing. You know? Yeah, so. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. all that. I want to yeah. ask you, I want to ask you before we shut it down. Uh, mm-hmm. Ask everybody this. Everybody gets a little mad, but they like mm-hmm. it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Your, th- your three Desert Island records, like your mm-hmm. three favorite records of all time. And, it, you know, maybe they're the three that influence you the most. Maybe they're the three yeah. that, like, you know, you're just into right now. Like, wh- whatever it is. But your three, like, big records of all time. So, for me, it would be Thriller. Uh-huh. Nice. Nas, Illmatic. Nice. And my third one would... Hmm... That's tough, man. It probably it would be like a maybe a Tame Impala record. Oh yeah, like I really like Tame Impala just because it's a vibe. Um, yeah, the Currents records are great. Yeah, Currents or uh, what is it the the um, the Rush? Um, oh yeah, someone after Currents. Like, yeah, the one. Yeah, I, I really like that. Just for I mean, if I'm on the island, man, like I don't want to just have like I want to have. Because chord progressions and oh, yeah. sound selection is everything. You know what I mean? Like, so, like, a lot of urban music is, like, the other stuff, like the drums or something. But, yeah, like, yeah. I really I really love chord progressions and just how they make you feel. You know what I mean? Yeah, you yeah. Be, like, floating. So, That's dope. Yeah. 
Yeah. I like it too. I have all three of those albums on vinyl, so I feel good about myself. Dope. <laughs> dope, <laughs> dope, dope, dope. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, I, I appreciate the time, man. I appreciate you hanging out, being on the show, man. I know people just love this so much. And uh, I know you're a busy dude. Um, so thanks for the time, bro. It was great to hang. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, I, I always like to talk about my journey. What's crazy is everybody's journey is different. And, uh, you know, just keep the faith and it definitely yeah. can happen, man, no matter what. That's good. I appreciate you, Needles. Okay. All right. Peace, bro. Man, what a great combo. Uh, the dude's done a lot of stuff. I, I didn't even, we didn't even talk about uh, the latest Grammy that he won for the track that he was a part of on the last Cardi B album. And I mean, all sorts of stuff. We didn't get into the 50 Cent stuff a ton. We, I mean, go follow him on Instagram. Uh, his Instagram is uh, at uh, production by needles, but it's P R O D by needles, N E E D L Z. It's in the show notes at prod by needles, uh, on Instagram and everything. That's the best place to follow him. When the studio gets up, the studio, these building, uh, there's going to be a lot associated, like he mentioned the app, a lot of social media stuff associated website, all sorts of things associated with that studio. Um, so there'll be a lot of stuff to follow. Uh, once that's up, he, he mentioned in the, in the episode, hopefully the first of 2024, uh, that's going to finally, finally get going. So, but you can follow him at prod by needles, um, production by needles, P R O D B Y N E E D L Z. Uh, it's in the show notes, uh, as well as some more of his credits and things that I posted in there as well. If you want to check that out, but I just want to say thanks to needles for being on the show. He's a busy guy. I appreciate the time and all the years of wisdom in the music industry and creative industry as a whole. Um, make sure to follow my fi at my fi podcast everywhere on social media. You can also go to my to check out past episode episodes of the show. Uh, we had Lauren spring, on this new season, uh, Ariel Posen, who's an incredible guitar player, uh, my friend Joel Cordy, who's an entrepreneur, owns a company called Chase Bliss. Uh, it's a guitar effects pedal company. Um, and this great episode with Needles, we got great episodes, y'all. I'm so stoked about the next couple episodes. So make sure you're subscribed, make sure you follow us on social. And until next time, you guys have a great one.